We're up against a strategy of the enemy and it hasn't changed. That's why the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Well, hey, there's new people. What's up with that? Well, but it's the same spirit. It's the same antichrist spirit. He's got new people that get a hold of that and work the same old plan. And so we want to talk about today, I guess the first slide, Fabian society. It is, uh, and how it is the same notions are working today, whether they, someone will call themselves a Fabian socialist or not. Uh, and it is the origin of modern socialism. You see, Karl Marx <clears throat> wrote the Communist Manifesto, but it was advocating revolution. You go in there, you just overthrow, and this is what you do. But they figured it out, wait a minute, that doesn't work. In fact, Marx was expelled from Germany and France because of his communist teachings. So the Fabian Society got together and said, we're going to do it just a little bit at a time. It'll be like putting a frog in a pot of water and then just gradually turning the heat up till you kill the frog. The frog will never jump out. You put it too hot right away, the frog will jump out. And so this is what the Fabian Society is all about. It is a British socialist organization formed in 1884 for the purpose of advancing the principles of socialism by slow, deceitful methods rather than by overthrow. This is how the devil operates, masquerading as an angel of light, a wolf in sheep's clothing. And they had the goal that they summed up, what they were trying to do, their vision, and they called it the Luciferian goal. This was later picked up by Saul Alinsky in his book, Rules for Radicals, uh, which then detailed practical applications on how to get this thing going. And he dedicated his book to Lucifer also. He said, who was the greatest radical that there was. So they have a Luciferian goal and it was stated by George Bernard Shaw, and let's look at that. This is still going on today. They just don't say, hey, I'm a, I'm a Fabian socialist and I'm gonna kill you. No, here's the Luciferian goal. Under socialism, you would not be allowed to be poor. Although really you would, but everybody would be poor and so you wouldn't really know you were poor. You would be forcibly fed, clothed, lodged, taught and employed whether you liked it or not. If it were discovered that you had not character and industry enough to be worth all this trouble, you might possibly be executed in a, but, oh, but they'll do it in a kindly manner. In a kindly manner, but whilst you were permitted to live, you would have to live well. So that was their goal and they called it the Luciferian gold. Because if they were open and honest about their intentions up front, they knew they couldn't win. Their method was to do things gradually while using deception and the enemy is still doing that today. The Fabian Society was named in honor of a Roman general named Fabius Maximus. He was nicknamed the Delayer. And Fabius's strategy was gradual victory through persistence, harassment, wearing the enemy down by attrition rather than head-on battles. Like uh, someone in the uh, uh, Congress saying, you see them in the Trump cabinet, you just go and harass them wherever they go, just wear them out. In fact, some of the cabinet had to resign because they just couldn't take it anymore. And so uh, Fabius Maximus, he couldn't defeat the Carthaginian army under the renowned General Hannibal in a head-on battle. So what did he do? Well, the Fabian Society first pamphlet states the notion. Here's the quote on the pamphlet. For the right moment, you must wait as Fabius did most patiently when warring against Hannibal, though many censured his delays. But when the time comes, you must strike hard as Fabius did, or your waiting will be in vain and fruitless. 
quoting Rahm Emanuel, President Obama's first chief of staff, never let a good crisis go to waste. Try to create a crisis, create, a, you know, big problems that only the brilliant leaders of government are able to solve. I've got a mess of pottage here for you. And then when that opening comes, strike, strike hard, and take freedoms away, and you keep doing it over and over until we don't have any freedoms left. Wow. So the logo of the Fabian Society is an angry tortoise. Let's look at that image. <laughs> it says, because they're slow moving, so you don't notice, but it says, when I strike, I strike hard. And it's all about one world government where there's a few ruling elite that have complete power over everybody else. In fact, part of that is the European Union was a start of trying to do that. And when they started that, the meeting that concluded that that was going to be established, they sat around a table which had a big... Um, that on it, the wow. Fabian Society logo was made of metal or something, except it had a serpent's head instead of that head. It was on that basis, and they, uh, they read the Luciferian goal and established the European Union. No matter, no matter, uh, no wonder why the enemy hated that breaking up, you know, Brexit and so forth, now Italy is thinking about it and why the enemy hates Trump so much too because he's focusing on America not this global stuff and uh, not adhering to the crisis oh global warming well ever since they started talking about it the temperature is actually lower than what it was there's not any scientific data anybody using a scientific method that would indicate there is there is global warming or that man has anything to do with it. All they do is run some models and they put whatever they need in the front of that model to make it come out to what they want. And so now they say, well, in a hundred years, that, listen, they can't even get a hundred minutes right. Have you ever seen that on the web? You gotta be kidding me. So in the, it was the Fabian Society was a bunch of literature leaders of the day. George Bernard Shaw, um, Virginia Woolf, uh, Aldous Huxley, and even George Orwell, whose real name is um, Eric Blair. But Orwell figured it out. He saw what was happening and said, this is demonic. This is horrible. And then he, he fought fire with fire. Then he used literature to fight to fight it and he wrote the novel 1984 and he wrote that in 1949 and the reason why he wrote that is because what he was trying to say is the Fabian Society was established in 1884 and if unchecked and unstopped they'll wait a hundred years if necessary and so he entitled it 1984 and that's where you find out about Big Brother is watching and so because this is what that they wanted. But thank God, God's people resisted. Hallelujah. And the society, the Fabian Society, Fabian Socialists, coat of arms is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Let's look at the image. Wow. Okay, FS stands for Fabian Society, and this is their coat of arms. A wolf and sheep's clothing. Don't let people know what you're doing. Just do it gradually, a little bit at a time. Let's look in Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth corrupt fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down. So that's what's going to happen to them. They're not bringing good fruit. They're going to be torn down 
cut down, but it's got to be you and I that do it. Hallelujah. I've inviting you to join with me. If you're not, I'll do it all by myself. For greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. I'm not letting that happen to our nation. Hallelujah. And cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. By their fruits, you shall know them. Okay, because, you know, the ends justify the means type thing. This is what Rules for Radical is all about. It's tell a lie over and over and over till it gets to be accepted as the truth. And the ends justify the means. Well, the means, that's the fruit. You look at that. Go harass people. Put uh, Trump's child in a room full of pedophiles and so forth. That fruit, you look at it, that's bad fruit. And by their fruits, you shall judge them. Now, even more awful than the uh, coat of arms, you think, how do you get any worse than that? Well, let's look at the image next of the Fabian Socialist Window. This was commissioned in 1900 by George Bernard Shaw uh, to celebrate the uh, success or the movement, the forwardness, ground gained by the Fabian Society. And it was w put into the home of Sidney and Beatrice Webb, some of the founders as well. This is Sidney Webb. This is George Bernard Shaw. And this is H.G. Weld. And you see, this is the world hot, molten, over an anvil, and they have hammers in their hand. So the idea is destroy the world, bring it to naught, make people uh, desperate, hopeless, with nothing, without hope, and so they'll turn to you, and then at the top, it says, remold it nearer to the heart's desire. So in order to get their utopia that they want, they have to first destroy the world and then hammer it into the shape that they want. And even worse, down here, this is H.G. Wells, and he is actually thumbing his nose. He's doing this, na 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 na. He is thumbing his nose, ooh, I'm kinda getting feedback. And what are these people down here? These are what uh, Leonard would refer to as useful idiots. They are worshiping this stack of books that extol the virtues of socialism. And they're just laughing at them. And see, this is most people that would say, oh, I, I'm, I'm for all that. They don't know how wicked it is. They were told, oh, it's something good. And but to the ruling elite, they're just a bunch of useful idiots. So, and one of the books at the bottom, man, I research and I research and I want to know what, what were these books? And I try to get images and blow them up and everything. I like to do my own homework, amen. I don't go by the talking heads, praise the Lord, because then God shows me things and then I know how to fight in the spirit realm. And at least the bottom one, it is Fabian Society Tracks and Essays written by George Bernard Shaw. And in it, I found 12 things that are in there. And it all also lands up with the Communist Manifesto. One, government ownership of all land. Government ownership or control of major industries. Government should control labor. Government control or ownership of communication and transportation. Government should control all credit. Government should control all insurance. Ever heard of workers' comp, Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare? They're making some progress. Uh, the state of Nevada is about 90% owned by the federal government. Now, um, the federal government should control the educational system. Ever heard of Common Core? It is demonic. Elimination of the significance of the family. Elimination of the significance 
of faith in God. You don't think they're making progress? How about eliminating the Ten Commandments from all public property? And the, this might surprise you, establishment of a minimum wage. Why is that? Well, let's say you get a job, you're making hamburgers. And now they got a, a minimum wage, it goes up. And now the hamburgers are more expensive. And now people said, you know what? I think I'll just make me a sandwich at home. And now there's not as many hamburgers to be made. They don't need as many people to make hamburgers. And now that young person is out of a job who needed that to get him started, to understand this is what it's like when you go to work. You got to be there on time. You got to do what the boss says. And if you do really good, you get promoted and get a raise you get, until they get, they make all those mistakes at that job, not when you actually get one and you get a family and so forth. You know what to do by the time you get there. Or then they say, look, minimum wages is so high. Now the analysis comes out different. I'll go ahead and invest in a machine to do it. That machine doesn't call in sick. That, uh, that machinery equipment doesn't need any benefits. And therefore there's no jobs for people to enter in. And it just makes them, it, it reinforces what they're trying to say that you are a victim. They want to divide the country, rich versus poor, black versus white, old versus young, every kind of way that they can, and want people to think they're victims, not victors. And if they'll just apply themselves, believe God, they'll be able to walk and experience the American dream. Hallelujah. Okay, what it was, we did number 10. Number 11, universal systems of pensions. Ever heard of Social Security Act? Justification of the use of force, if necessary, to obtain the goals. That's what's in. This is what they have them worshiping. And if you listen to a lot of young people today, they are, that's what they're doing. But God, two of my favorite words in the Bible. Hallelujah. It's up to you and I to declare what we want to see. Hallelujah. So this remolding to your heart's desire. Well, what is their heart's desire? As stated by H.G. Wells, it is outright world socialism, scientifically planned and directed. And that means eugenics. They got to destroy the world, destroy people in order to make it better. Just like it was Genesis 11. You see, this is how Satan operates. Lies, deceit, murder, do it gradually, kill, steal, and destroy. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I've come that they might have life and have it to the full. Jesus doesn't say, I got to put you down. I got to stomp on you till when you have nothing, then maybe I'll, no. He came down to our level. And he didn't say, let's all stay down here. As uh, Winston Churchill said, socialism is the equal sharing of misery. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to come down here and equally share your misery with you. He did it on the cross and that was it. He was resurrected, went to the Father and said, and then he said, don't stay down there. Come up with me. Hallelujah. It's not a zero sum game for someone else to go up. Doesn't mean someone else has to go down. There's plenty to go around in the kingdom of God of the increase of his government. There shall be no end. Hallelujah. God is all about increase. Hallelujah. Let's look at John 8, 44. This is the tools they use. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But Jesus is the truth, the way, the life. Hallelujah. Socialists like Lucifer or Satan always profess good intentions for their use of force, coercion, or intimidation upon mankind. Hallelujah. But by their fruits, we shall know them. Um, now, 
In the early 1900s, the Fabian Society members advocated the idea of scientifically planned society and supported eugenics by sterilization. Uh, early members that came to lead and be the face of the Fabians were H.G. Wells and George Bernard Shaw. And uh, that is how the Fabian socialism became to be known just socialism, primarily m migrated to the United States. You know how? Because H.G. Wells and Margaret Sanger were lovers. And they hooked up. And Margaret Sanger had the eugenics all down. Her vision, as Hillary Clinton said, I just admire Margaret Sanger so much, especially her vision. Well, let me clue you into what her vision was, to eliminate all black people from the face of the earth. It was called Project Negro. And the idea was to get them sterilized so they couldn't reproduce because they were watering down the human gene pool in her assessment. And then when that really wasn't working too well, she said, well, if I can't keep them from getting in the womb, I'll just kill them once they get in the womb. And that's really what Planned Parenthood is all about. Whenever a new facility is built, where do they place it? Right here in Houston, one too many years ago, they built a new one. Guess where they put it? Right in the middle of the heavily pop black populated and other minorities. They had to weed out those undesirables. And so this is uh, where the eugenics came in. And they, uh, uh, the, actually the Nazis got the notion of eugenics from Margaret Sanger to eliminate the Jews. So let's pull back the curtain and see the real goal of socialism, which is power over people. You know why they had to eliminate? Because this small group of elites they can only control so many people and keep the control over it. So they, had to, they have to eliminate a whole lot of people so that the, the universe of the people they're controlling, they'll be able to control them. And the idea is let the elites make the decisions for us because as commoners, we can't make good decisions. So they should take our property and take our freedom and even take our lives because our lives aren't worth anything anyway. So I'm gonna show you a bone chilling video. And this is going to be George Bernard Shaw. So no one could say, oh, you misquoted him. I'm sure that's not true. It's gonna be in his own words. So let's see the first one, please. The popular British playwright Bernard Shaw supported Hitler in the mass media. The left supported Hitler not because he deceived them. They knew Hitler would kill. He said he would. In fact, it was why they supported him. You must all know half a dozen people at least who are no use in this world, who are more trouble than they are worth. Just put him there and say, sir or madam, now will you be kind enough to justify your existence? If you can't justify your existence, if you're not pulling your weight in the social vote, if you're not producing as much as you consume, or perhaps a little more, then uh, clearly uh, we cannot use the big organization of our society uh, for the purpose of keeping you alive, because your life does not benefit us, and it can't be of very much use to yourself. So you had to justify why you should be kept alive. So the Fabian Society wanted to kill the weak, the infirm, the unproductive. Hitler wanted to weed out and kill the Jews. Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood, wanted to kill blacks and other minorities. You see, eugenics is just evil. Somebody will figure out somebody they don't like. And that's what the devil does. Kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, came to have, give us life and life more abundant. And every life is precious yeah. to Jesus. Amen. All right. You ain't seen nothing yet. Let's go to the next video. The chemists to discover a humane gas that will kill instantly and painlessly. Deadly by all means, but humane, not cruel. Discover humane gas. 
After 10 years, such gas will be discovered. It will be called Cyclone B. The man who oversaw its practical application, Adolf Eichmann, will later testify that thanks to Cyclone B, people in Auschwitz died without pain. Cyclone B was a humane gas. Yes, Eichmann will use the very same words. It must be said, though, that Bernard Shaw, as well as the left in general, fundamentally opposed Nazism. Because Hitler had distorted Marxism beyond recognition, gassing people based on their nationality was absolutely inexcusable. The selection should be based on class. Hitler got it all wrong. Absolutely different people needed to be killed. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. So when people advocate socialism, do we go up there and say, you stupid? No. We fight in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Very lovingly try to tell the truth, but just come against forces of darkness because we have dominion and authority over them and say, you will not do this to our land. We will have our freedom. We will not give it up. And you know, God gave us capital. I could take a whole session on that and how without setting one foot in a church or reading one verse of scripture, if somebody was to work capitalism, they'd see demonstrate before them the kingdom of God and its principles. But uh, so, um, is, is, is that all the videos? You got one more? Let it roll. In New York, I put it to you very carefully and exactly. I told you that what you had to do in this country was to abolish your constitution, which was preventing you from doing anything. And now you see what's happened since. Every attempt you've made to do anything, the Supreme Court immediately stops it and says it's against the constitution. Well, I tell you again, get rid of your constitution. But I suppose you won't. So, thank God for our constitution. God spoke to our founding fathers and they listened. And now we have something in the natural as well as in the spirit realm to stop this. All of this that they wanted to do has not been realized because of two reasons, spiritual, God's people, and two, in the natural, the Constitution. We need to cling to that because it is a gift from God. So all the socialists, all the atheists, all the communists, all the terrorists, terrorists they all get blessed with our milk and honey. Why? Because God's people are here and we're doing it God's way. Praise the Lord because it rains on the just and the unjust. And God loves all people so he gave us the constitution and really we want immigrants. We're a nation of immigrants. In fact, the best citizens that there are are people who did it right in coming here and they appreciate the freedoms and love the country more than many of us naturalized citizens that take our freedoms for granted because they've come out of places where there wasn't freedom and where there was socialism. Praise the Lord. So, well, Pastor David, that, I, I, that doesn't sound right. Why would God favor our people, you know, the United, people of the United States over other people? He doesn't love us more. That's right, he doesn't. Everything that God has is for whosoever will. We just have the only nation that the founders decided to listen to God and obey God and love God. And if any other nation would do that and then implement what God has told them to do, they'd get the same blessings that we get, praise the Lord. God gave us this land to be a friend to Israel. Without the United States, Israel might not have been formed in 1948. But because of the power and the uh, influence and the prosperity of the United States working the God-given free enterprise capitalistic system, when the United States says, I recognize Israel, virtually the whole world had to follow. And we were given the assignment to be a peacemaker. Praise the Lord. We stopped Hitler. Where would the world be 
if it wasn't God had not used us, praise the Lord, and also the gospel out all over the world. No other nation sends out the gospel. All the other nations combined don't even do a tenth of what the United States of America does because of our prosperity. No wonder everybody wants to be here. If those that are bashing it, if it's so bad, how come everybody wants to come, amen? And how come everybody wants to leave your country because you oppress them? Hallelujah. What we have to do is stop the enemy and his efforts to try to bring oppression here. And we've been anointed to do that because Jesus went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. That gives a mandate to you and I to do this. Amen. It's not who we better. It's not politics. It's, it's war. Praise God. And we're on the winning side. Isn't it good to know you're going to win? No. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you remember George Bernard Shaw talking about justifying your life. Why should we use our resources for the purposes of keeping you alive? Well, <laughs> you, they do things slowly, little by little. So they're not going to come up to people and say, you got to justify your life. No, they're going to start justifying other things like that which is in the Bill of Rights. And it is a right. You don't have to justify something in the Bill of Rights. But in the, um, you know, because they do the slow turtle thing. So they want you to justify your guns. Let's look at the New Jersey gun law. On the application, every applicant not applying as a law enforcement officer must demonstrate justifiable need in order to obtain a permit. Let's do the, uh, by means of a letter detailing specific need attached to the justification. Now let's look at the New York City gun law. You won't get a carry permit without showing cause. With your application, you must include a letter of necessity justifying your need for a gun. In London, it went so haywire that their police, you know, the bobbies, they carry a stick. That's worse than bringing a knife to a gunfight. They bring a stick to a gunfight, and they're not doing so well. In fact, there's parts of London where they're not even welcome. They go in there, they get a whooping if they come out alive because it's Sharia law there. There is no law. It's Sharia law. This is what the devil would like here. Uh, you see, socialism in the 20th century, leaders, dictators of socialist countries slaughtered, murdered over 100 million people. But first, they had to take their guns because they weren't able to do that if the people had guns. Our founders were very wise and they heard from God. Who do you think has more? Uh, listen, here's what happened. In Uganda, you had Idi Amin, you had Russia Lenin, Stalin, uh, Chairman Mao. Uh, so who do you think has more wisdom from God? Hitler was for gun control. Mao was for gun control. Uh, Lenin, Idi Amin, all for gun control. The founders were for the right to bear arms. Which do you think had more wisdom from God? A bunch of murdering butchers are the founders of the greatest nation in the history of the world. Praise the Lord. So, socialism is widespread in this world today and only the United States and Israel are still standing. I don't think that's a coincidence. This is a spiritual battle. I'm going to read to you a quote from Nikita Khrushchev. Some of you, most of you are too young to remember him, but he was, I remember he took his shoe off in the UN and started beating on the table with his shoe. And this is a quote from him to, uh, he was the former premier of the Soviet Union, spoke to Ezra Benson, was then the secretary of agriculture of the United States under President Eisenhower and Khrushchev said that Benson's grandchildren would live under communism 
And then after assuring Khrushchev that he would do all in his power to assure that his and all the grandchildren would live under freedom, Khrushchev arrogantly declared the following. You Americans are so gullible. No, you won't accept communism outright, but we'll keep feeding you small doses of socialism until you finally wake up and find you already have communism. We won't have to fight you. We'll so weaken your economy until you fall like overripe fruit into our hands. Slow, wait for the opportunity, but when you strike, you strike hard. But we already have everything that we need to defend this land. We have the Spirit of God. We have the authority of God, the name of Jesus, and dominion over every force. You notice God gave us dominion over everything except one thing. We don't have dominion over other people made in the image of God. We don't dominate other people. That's what socialism is all about to dominate people. Hallelujah. So let's look at, uh, y'all get excited. I'm getting close to the end here. Hallelujah. I heard some stomachs growling. Uh, let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. How from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. Who, who's he talking about here? Lucifer. The Luciferian goal. Dedicate the book to Lucifer. You have been cast down to earth. You who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Sounds like the Tower of Babel, doesn't it? I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. This is what the ruling elite want to do. They want to tell you, they want to be like the most high. They want to tell you what you could eat, what work you have to do, whether you could go somewhere or not, what kind of car you can drive, if you could have a car, and all those kind of things. How many children can you have? They want you to have a permit to have a child. Uh, you have to justify why you want to have a child. And this is what it's all about. It's demonic. There's no question about it. But the devil masquerades as an angel of light. Oh, I just want to help the poor people. The best way to help them is to get them involved in the greatest economy ever and with the American free enterprise capitalistic system. And, you know, te give them fish, but teach them how to fish, praise the Lord. Show them the, the principles of the kingdom of God. Get them born again, hallelujah. It used to be the, the church, the uh, neighbors, the church would take care of people who are struggling. Now that's all. We don't do that anymore. Hardly it's, oh, it's the government that do. The government is trying to take the place of God. That's really the goal of the whole thing. Praise the Lord. So socialists are like Lucifer. They want to control people. They want to be like God. Well, what happened in the kingdom of heaven to that socialist up there? Someone who wanted to be like God and power to control others. Well, we just read, he was cast out. So what do we do on earth as citizens of heaven? We cast out the socialists. How do we do that? We cast our ballot for a free market candidate. And the socialists or the democratic socialists, that's just another way to make it so it doesn't sound so bad. Like Agenda 21 is now 2030 Agenda. We'll be talking more about that. Uh, we cast them out by casting our ballot. We're supposed to put people in office that love Jesus who are able to represent the people. It's supposed to be people of the highest moral character, the best and the brightest, because most people are busy about doing their job, going about the father's business, making a living, taking care of their family. Not everybody can know all 
stuff like what I'm telling you today. But if you're called to do that and give out the, the warnings and also declare that we have the victory and not operate in fear, then I have to do that, praise the Lord. You, maybe you don't, I do my own homework too. I don't go by the talking heads. So it's probably best that, you know, you go about your father's business, praise the Lord, but know what's going on and don't be ignorant on the devices. So what should we do? Wring our hands and, oh, look what the threat is to our nation and the world. Uh, no, is this how the ch a child of God is supposed to act? So what do we do? Well, you may look at the uh, uh, Christians in our land who say, oh, no, you can't talk about any of that stuff. And they, to me, I remember saying to the Lord, they, it, they, I look on the, when it comes to this area, I see the body of Christ. It looks like a bunch of dead, dry bones. And he said, well, speak to them like in the book of Ezekiel and command them to put on muscle and strength and to rise up and be an exceeding great army to get the victory. And that's what we're going to do right now. Praise the Lord. Because God loves the United States of America. He loves that we get the gospel out all over the world and people who have no hope, get hope. Amen. And I love it when they strive and say, I want to go to the United States of America and they do what's necessary to get there and come. And they're the best citizens that we have. Praise the Lord. God doesn't give benefits of citizenship of heaven to people who aren't citizens of heaven, does he? No. So, we're going to speak to the body of Christ. We're going to let God deal with our hearts. And I'm not saying you need to be an activist and do all that. No, just declare on a regular basis in the name of Jesus that we keep our freedom. Someone asked Ben Franklin after they got through with everything, you know, uh, put the together and they said, what have you done? And he said, we've given you a republic if you can keep it. And so we want to keep our republic. Amen. So just declare on a regular basis. And then when you see something, you know, hey, this is demonic. Like taking prayer out of school or something like that. Just say, no, devil, you're not doing that. In Jesus' name, this is what's going to happen. And God will use the body of Christ to preserve the freedoms we have because if we go down, the whole world goes down. We are the salt of the earth. We are the preservative. Amen. The Antichrist spirit would be working a lot worse if it wasn't for the body of Christ. How about when the rapture takes place and the salt is gone and there's not any preservative? Read in the Bible what happens. The Antichrist spirit starts uh, having its way. But as long as we're here, he's not going to have his way. For greater is he that is in you and me than he that is in the world. Let's pray together.